So if we think about home and school situations requiring response inhibition, so I'm not gonna read these to you, but raising your hand, waiting for your turn, um, being patient with a younger sibling, waiting in line, not talking back to your parents, that all requires response inhibition. So what are we gonna do? How are we gonna help kids build this ability to wait? So we have to talk about self-control strategies. What impulsive behavior are we going to address? And, and we're gonna talk about this concept throughout this whole presentation, but how are we teaching kids um, about their brains, about how their brains work? Because kids have to understand that. They can't just be told, don't do that, and here's why. But let's figure out what is going on in your brain. What level of your brain is malfunctioning and how can you keep it from malfunctioning? Um, so like for us as adults, and we're gonna talk about this more, but you know, are, are we going to a busy grocery store on Sunday afternoon and is that stressing us out to the point where we buy chocolate cookies and take them home and eat half the pack? You know, so, so what are we doing? Are we identifying those, when those impulsive behaviors happen? You know, what are we gonna address? When does it happen? Does it happen when the child is tired or in the morning or in the afternoon? And then we need to figure out what they can do instead. So they're doing this now what can they do instead that's gonna help them and motivate them? And we need to find ways that that child can show us that behavior and cue that child um, when the behavior is expected, verbal or and or nonverbal. And we think about cues we give our kids and kids, they, they listen to a lot of voices all day long. They listen to their parents or their caregivers. Then they go to school and they might listen to a teacher speak a lot. So thinking about alternative ways to cue a child including giving them sort of some sort of tactile or, or visual cue. And we'll talk about more of those later um, in, in order to get that expected behavior. So when we think about intervention strategies, obviously the most important thing to remember is we're breaking things down for these kids. We're breaking it into simple levels for maximal success. We're trying to make the child as independent as possible but not to rely on us. Um, we, we want that gray area. What, what do we do when the child's on the brink of frustration? We're kind of taking them as far as we can take them, or they're taking themselves as far as they can take themselves independently. And then we're kind of jumping in to, to help them all the way through, but eventually fading out those cues. So you really have to be an excellent observer of your students and your clients. The, and parents have to do this too. We just have to observe them very, very closely to make sure they're not getting to that frustrated moment.